and is yet very limited number of people, is based, as I have already said, on three specific data formed in me at different times during my preparatory age. The first of these three data, from the moment of its arising, became as it were the chief directing lever of my entire whole, while the other two became the vivifying sources for the nourishing and perfecting of the first this first datum arose and he went under still, as it said, a chubby mite, my dear, now deceased, grandmother was then still alive and was a hundred and some years old. When my grandmother, may she attain the kingdom of heaven, was dying, my mother, as was then the custom, took me to her bedside and, as I kissed her right hand, my dear grandmother placed her dying left hand on my head and said in a whisper, yet very distinctly, Eldest of my grandsons, listen and always remember my strict injunction to you, in life never do as others do. Having said this, she gazed at the bridge of my nose and, evidently noticing my perplexity and my obscure understanding of what she had said, added somewhat angrily and imperiously. Either do nothing, just go to school, or do something nobody else does, whereupon she immediately, without hesitation and with a perceptible impulse of disdain for all around her, and with commendable self-cognizance, gave up her soul directly into the hands of his faithfulness, the Archangel Gabriel. I think it will be interesting and perhaps even instructive for you to know that all this made so powerful an impression on me that I was suddenly unable to endure anyone around me, and as soon as we left the room where the mortal, planetary body, of the cause of the cause of my arising lay, I, very quietly, trying not to attract attention, stole away to the pit where, during Lent, the bran and potato peelings were stored for our sanitarian, that is to say, our pigs. And I lay there, without food or drink, in a tempest of whirling and confused thoughts, of which, fortunately for me, I still had only a very limited number in my childish brain, right until my mother's return from the cemetery, when the weeping that was shaking her after finding me absent and searching for me in vain, broke in on me. At once I climbed out of the pit and stood a moment on the edge, for some reason or other with hands outstretched. Then I ran to her and, clinging fast to her skirt, involuntarily began to stamp my feet and, why I don't know, to imitate the braying of the donkey that belonged to our neighbor, the bailiff. Why all this produced such a strong impression on me just then, and why I almost automatically behaved so strangely, I still cannot make out, though during recent years, particularly on the days known as Shrove Tide, I have pondered over it a great deal, trying to discover the reason. I have only reached the logical supposition that it was the room where this sacred scene occurred, which was to have tremendous significance for the whole of my future life, is permeated through and through with the scent of a special incense brought from a monastery of Mount Athos and very popular among followers of every shade of belief of the Christian religion. Whatever it may have been, those are the facts. During the days following this event, nothing particular happened in my general state, unless it was that I walked more often than usual with my feet in the air, that is to say, on my hands. My first act was obviously not in accord with the manifestation.
manifestations of others, though without the participation either of my consciousness or of my subconscious, occurred on exactly the 40th day after my grandmother's death, when our family, our relatives, and all those who had esteemed my dear grandmother, who was loved by every body, were gathered in the cemetery, as was the custom, to perform over her mortal remains reposing in the grave what is called the requiem service, suddenly, without rhyme or reason, instead of observing what was conventional among people of all degrees of tangible and intangible morality and of every station in life, that is, instead of standing quietly as if overwhelmed, with an expression of grief on one's face and even if possible with tears in one's eyes, I started skipping and dancing around the grave and saying, let her with the saints her go. She was a rare one, goodness knows. And so on and so forth. And from this moment on, as regards any form of aping, that is, imitating the habitual automatized manifestations of those around me, a something always a